part 13 and it's time to get this guy, Chu Huang. He's got a unique weapon, unique armor, a wee Liaozi, high expertise and melee vision, and he's only 24, and he's got a unique background, and he is one of Cao Cao's five legendary commanders, I think. So, there's this guy, there's Yue Jin, and there are a few other ones. Uh, Zhang Liao, the one that's underneath Dong Zhao, Dong Zhuo right now. So, we're starting to assemble a decent group here. We've got Gojia, Dianwei, the Zhao cousins, Lu Fan, the other guy, the one that, of many scars, Zhou Tai, I think. And then we're getting this guy, hopefully. If this goes well, all to plan. So there's a 6% capture chance and there's a breakdown there. And there are a few variables involved, which I'm starting to understand quite well. So, it's pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to get Yang Feng, and there's a small chance I'll get Zhu Huang. And if not, he runs away and then I can try again. If I don't get him, if I don't get... The only outcome I'm going to accept right now is capturing Zhu Huang without maiming him. Because when you capture a character that has resilience, they're eligible to get rolled for a set of traits that, are, that I think only resilient characters can ever get. So there's one-eyed, scarred, and maimed. And I think one-eyed and scarred have positives, and maimed is just all negatives, so you never want to get maimed. You always want to try and get either nothing or scarred or one-eyed, and I want to get... If I would get scarred, I would accept that, because it's all positives. It gives a bonus to authority and morale, and then there's one-eyed, which reduces melee evasion, so I don't know about that. Like, it gives scare, of course, which is what Dune's gonna end up having one-eyed with scare, overlapping with the one he's got from his skills. But Zhu Huang with scare, he's not eligible for it in his skill tree. He can't unlock scare, so this is the only way I think that he can become scary, maybe. No, wait, I think the random traits that are assigned through the game, some of them have scare as well, like Vengeful, there are a few. So, so maybe the only way that characters can become one-eyed, scarred, or maimed is by being resilient and fighting battles and losing like this guy's about to, because decisive victory, so... I'm getting the reinforcements from the city, which is making this even more decisive, and that affects the capture chance too, so... Heroic victories are the best, I think, but... I can't... compel a heroic victory by fighting the battle, because... the only way to... even if I was to have inferior forces and get a heroic victory, like... that would involve killing these two. I don't want to kill them, I want to capture them, so... All I can do here is use the auto-resolve system to bypass the unbreakable and hope, and if I don't get the outcome I want, I might have to just save scum. Alright, so I've captured Yang Feng. He is decent for his stats, but... He's 46, so I'm probably going to have to just banish him. Also, he's friends with Zhu Huang, so I'm glad I didn't kill him, because that would piss him off, I think, if we killed his friend. And ransom. Alright, so they've retreated, and Ooh. armies diminished, 19 out of 83. Units are just fractions exist. So, decisive victory again, 6%. Again, what the fuck? So he's not on his last wound. So we didn't wound him, I don't think we wounded him. Yeah, he doesn't have any traits indicating he's wounded yet, so... Death animation? What was that? No, I don't know. Alright, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Haha, <laughs> yep. One-eyed! Alright, so... It fucking worked. I'm accepting this and I'm continuing. I'm glad I don't have to save scum this. This is like the actual genuine f outcome of just continuing from the end of part 12 and auto resolving. Nothing off screen happened, so this is all authentic. 
makes it even better. So he's one eyed, minus ten melee evasion, and we got his unique as well, of course, because I'm fucking employing him. I'm happy with that, that's fucking perfect. And Gojia ranked up, so it's between these two, and that's actually a tough decision because Fire Arrows or Ambition and Gorilla, fuck it, Fire Arrows. So I can now burn down towers and also fight night battles where I think I can fight night battles. Can I? Yeah, so fire arrows and night battles are tied to the same button, so yeah, cool. I can now rain fire upon my enemies while they're running around in the dark, shitting them for their fucking pants. Perfect. So I've got to deal with all of this. So we got three characters recently. There's this guy, who's shite. He's got no instinct really from his traits and he's 53. So stripped him of his armor and fucking banishing him. And I think everyone's pretty happy, so it's Yuan Huan that's the most pissed off, 14. Yeah, so that works out. I can do another two banishes. Uh, Yang Feng. He's got decent traits and he's friends with Zhu Huang. Friendships with Infaction. Well, he's not really friendly an anymore because they just got absolutely destroyed on the field, so they kind of resent each other now for that. But it doesn't matter because I'm fucking banishing him. He had no armor that I could strip. And then it's Zhuan Fan, so. This guy has decent resolve. Like, he's got Tranquil, which is one of the best traits for a champion. 12 resolve. And the other two give resolve as well. And he's a good administrator. I don't think that minus 4 food is a big deal. I think 10% extra peasant income at the cost of 4 food and given public order. Maybe worth it as Sal Sal with massive food excesses, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because he's fucking 43 and we've got enough characters so I'm fucking banishing him. And we're back up to 15-1600 surplus income. So this is looking good. Got a lot of legendary characters, got some support characters. Yan Huan, Lu Fan, Sang Ba. Yeah. So we've got how many of the five legendary generals now? I think it's just. I think this might be the first one. Xu Huang. So there's this guy, Liu Xiao, I think. Can I look at the character screen? Where is that again? Uh, characters. And then Dong Zhuo. And then. Nah, he's got a. He's got a general. His main general, aside from Lubu, of course. And I think we want to end up getting him. So if I go up to take on Dong Zhou, I want to make sure that guy lives and then we get him. So I'm going to be aware of that. I'm not sure about Lubu. Don't know what to think about him yet. Because I don't know how he fits into this. I'd have to make him the faction heir. Or maybe the prime minister. I don't know if they're equivalent. I think the only way to keep him happy, really, is to make him the factioner, so... Uh, man, I might have to just banish Lubu immediately or something, I don't know, fucking... I'll think about it. Strip him and banish him, maybe. <laughs> and then see if he turns up in some other faction on the battlefield. Because we are kind of getting close now to taking on Dong Zhuo, so... How many turns away is that? That's... Fuck's sake. So he's like 10 turns away and we're, we're only like 19 turns into the campaign, goddammit. So that's a long way, and I don't want to sail up the river because I can get auto-resolved without being able to do anything about it, so... Fuck. And also this is really... Someone commented, I think, that the terrain is really difficult up here, so we've got mountains with forests. Like, this is a bitch to navigate. It takes a lot of turns to go through all this crap. And then up here, like, there's a lot of plains, open areas that are, I mean, traversing this. It takes a long time, so... All these commanders down here, all these counties are quite densely placed, so you can go from one to the other in a, in a turn, pretty much, but up here it's like one and a half turns, two turns, three turns sometimes, especially down here. There are mines, copper mines, jade mines maybe, so yeah, that's, that's an issue. This is why I think 
Uh, what is it called again? Yeah, flexibility with reduced redeployment cost. Getting redeployment cost all the way down will probably be really useful for navigating all this because then I could just send an army all the way through and just seed. Like, so I would have my reach extended all the way up to here and then I could send armies off branching to try and take on the smaller tasks. And I could do that easily with redeployment because I could move marmies around the front quickly, so... And at no real expense. Currently sitting on... Does, does Lady Bayan have that? Not yet. But I'm probably gonna have to go for that next. So I'm gonna have half redeployment cost and then there's also the Tuntian conscription. Or is it? Yeah, so that's gonna be... Someone commented on this a few videos ago, so it would result in 99% if I was to have three of these. So, three headquarters for the 24%, three times eight, and then the three times 25 for the triumvirate of commanders for the 75, 75 plus 24, minus 99% redeployment cost, and then I can just have a military settler training camp somewhere for the last 1%. And then we should have free redeployment. And combined with what I was describing, with just having really decisive spear point, spearheading armies, like a vanguard that just pushes right through, I could be... I could do quite well by just redeploying smaller armies around the place, wherever they are... Uh, wherever there's good opportunities for them. I've got an assignment here. That's for this guy, of course. Gotta just redeploy him, reassign him, and then that will give us another 150 peasantry income, I think. 112, 120. So that'll bring us up to 1700 again. Construction, I think, is going pretty well here, so... Building everywhere. Yep. So, I'm saving up money right now, I can't build anything really. Could force things through, but no point. Gonna continue marching up here now. And yeah, look at that. I might have to just take on Yuan Shu, so... I'm thinking I'll probably have to have this army come up here and just pass by Liu Dai. I might give this city to Liu Dai. I don't know. Having just cities sitting there on their own. It's a bit pointless, especially when there's no synergy and I'm going to have to build them up myself. I can just give this to Liu Dai and let him build it up, because he is peaceful, has no wish to expand or maintain strong armies, tries to avoid conflict, so he's going to be a better friend. I've got trade with him, don't I? Yep, and I'm getting 500 a turn, so maybe I'll get even more if I make him give him a whole commandery to prosper. I'm gonna do an artillery check. Did I do that on this turn yet? Don't know. Alright, army movement. I need to think about how I'm gonna approach the western front. Starting from the south. Dian Wake and lead. He's at the front. And Sal Ren behind. And I've been thinking about the the weapons, so take this off, Xu Huang, the 15 resolve, has no synergy, I can give this to him, and he will be more potent on the battlefield. So 39 melee evasion, that's decent. And then Sal Ren, Sal Ren has the twin martial G, I could give that to Xu Huang, or I could just let Sal Ren keep it. Might just let him keep it. But, I think Xu Huang has... No. Yeah, Dian Wei has matched Jian, given instinct. That is not... Yeah, so removing that from him. In the meantime, he's got this great axe. Then I'll give him the proper axe. Cleaver of Mountains, is it called? Yep. And then there's... 
This guy, alright, so he's got expertise on this spear, and something that Zhu Huang has that's hidden is the ability to equip every kind of weapon, so I don't have many weapons that have expertise that are unique, I mean that are non-common, but I can give Xu Huang that spear, so the tank can get the match Jian, and I'm going to remove the spear from him. So this is working out quite well. I can actually achieve synergy by just shuffling weapons around and the horses, so I've got to take horses off of, I think, this guy, so he can lose this horse, and... Lady Bayan can keep hers, so she's got chunky armor reducing speed, a horse reducing speed, so keep that in mind that she is low mobility but has wedge and high armor, so I can use her to as like a blunt tool to just slam into the backs of packed infantry groups. And then Sao Ren, he doesn't yet have, what is it called again? May knock back. So he's he's mostly to to distract. So if I can if I can deny charges with Sao Ren, have the tank be highly mobile and mighty knock back the sweetest targets and have Lady Bayan slam into blobs opportunistically then I think we should have a nice complementation here, like, they should all have a good role that we can accommodate quite well. It's going to take a couple of turns to get to Jiang Jia, and we're hitting them at the city first, so they'll have a decent garrison. That's a Huangzhou city, and then there's the farmland up here, and then we're at Heiyi, so I'll be coming on to Heiyi from the south and coming on to Yuan Shao from the east and then I think we can maybe have a play off of each other here maybe even give Dian Wei some support so I might get Lu Fan onto the field and have Xu Huang as well so I want to think about the guys that have armour that reduces upkeep so that would be the tank, Dun, not Dian Wei, but Xu Huang. So if I was to have the two Xiao cousins and Xu Huang in an army with a lot of units, that would be a really cost-effective army. So that's something I could go for eventually. I would have, I would have cavalry, spearmen, and infantry. And I could maybe use the infantry to deal with the archers, take the aggro of the archers with formations. That's something I could go for. I want to have varied army compositions. I like how I started out with Sabre Cavalry Militia Corps. That worked really well. It served us pretty fucking well. Uh, not even on turn 20 yet and done all this. Pretty sweet. But I want to start being a bit more aggressive, especially once the money starts coming in. What is this minus five tribute? What is that? I don't know what that is. I've got a reform. So this is the second last reform. Like, that's everything leading up to the 10% replenishment is unlocked now, so I just need to wait another five turns and I'll have proper replenishment and that'll change the campaign a lot. I think I can end turn now, so I don't think I want to be requesting aid, if I could even do that. Nope, I can't. Maybe if I didn't do all that banishing, but... Yep, saved all the money there by banishing all those fuckers. And I'm end a turn. Turn 20. And we have Shu Huang before turn 20. Fucking sweet. Oh, what's going on there? I think that's the faction leader of the Han. So, when I captured... Oh! Is that... There he is! Fuck yeah! The Lion of Yangping. And what's the other guy? What's Xu Huang? 
Xu Huang is the guardian of the gates. Wow, this shit is fucking colourful. So they both have resilience. This guy has a bit of a shitty... Look, 15 expertise. Is that all? Is that it? What? What the fuck? And he's 36. So he's not that good in terms of his age and his expertise. Or even his stats. Like, fuck's sake, what's this? He has no expertise from any of these. <laughs> it's just weird. And he's got, what's his... He's only got 99, plus 99. This is the guy, I think, that was with Sao Sao at this, the siege to take on Lubu. I fought that historical battle, and this guy is familiar. And he comes with a military Jian, short on those. And his armor is mediocre. He has a high base armor. Wait, what's... Well, Zhu Huang has really high armor. Yep, 65 armor base and 29 that would be 39 but he got one eyed of course scare resistant to fatigue as well and unbreakable look at that fatigue resistance so that's two traits that normally you have to buy that he's got by virtue of his nature acquired nature as well of course so I don't need to get, where is it, fatigue resistance, does he even have any? Nope, so he doesn't have fatigue resistance, he wouldn't be able to get it anyway, but he has it by virtue of his traits, cool. So he's fatigue resistant and has scare, and he's got decent skills as well, so melee evasion for melee infantry and then I could get another 15, so his infantry could have a plus 20 of melee evasion, fucking hell so that would be that would be 49% melee evasion for Jian sword guards so they would last basically twice as long in a melee because of their ability to evade attacks and then the tiger of the, the Lion of Yangping. He's got 15% melee damage for melee infantry. So if I was to have a heir and prime minister duo of Xu Huang and Yue Jin, our infantry would be synergizing really well for melee damage and melee evasion and all that crap. So they'd become way more formidable. So yeah, I think it depends on how how shit's balanced of course, but if you were to max out infantry capabilities with your faction build and ancillaries, all that crap, characters, melee infantry could maybe end up being decent, thinking about it. So that could be a challenge, to try and make infantry cost effective, viable, because obviously I'm really, really not impressed with these units axe band so far. I mean it's just bizarre, like fuck's sake, they've got nine base damage, twenty-four armor piercing, right? Or wait a minute, no. I think that's already been buffed a bit. Nah, I can't I can't see just the base. So I can see that this has been buffed a little bit. I think it's meant to be nine and twenty one or nine and twenty two, I don't know. Twenty three maybe? Either way, nine and twenty four, right? And then if I was to get just the shittiest unit in the game, fucking G Militia, it's 28 and 28, what the fuck? I mean, I understand that the melee attack rate is lower at 21, but holy shit, the shittiest infantry unit in the fucking game has higher base attack and armor piercing than shock infantry, like fucking axe bands. What is going on? 36 attack rate, 30 attack rate. I mean, it's definitely high, the attack rate, but just that, like, the base attack values are garbage. Fuck's sake, 24 armor piercing, less than... That's fucking axes, I mean, look at the size of them, they're big pole arms. Look at the, the length of the handle, fuck's sake. Yeah, I don't know. I think that the way the balancing's been done has really made shock troops, sword infantry, really 
just to start off with, really ineffective. I mean, G-Masha are going to outperform them in a fight. I mean, fucking anti-cavalry infantry outperforming sword infantry in a head-on fight. I mean, think back to Shogun 2, where it would be Katana Samurai versus Yari Samurai. Imagine playing Shogun 2 and charging Katana Samurai head-on into Yari Samurai and losing. That's what this is. It's fucking retarded. They even cost less. 100, no way they don't. Well, I don't know if G Militia would beat Gian Sword Guards. I think it would be close, but they would definitely beat Axe Band. And they both have 120 upkeep. What the fuck? So they have the ability to reflect cavalry charges and, and the ability to defeat their equivalent and cost of Axe Infantry, for fuck's sake. Saber Militia, again, is another example. 32 attack rate, 21 attack rate, 27 base, 7 armor piercing, 28, 28. It just doesn't work, it doesn't add up. Basically, these, these units are here to to deal with archers. <laughs> it's daft, I mean, holy shit. They're for charging at archers, which are... Cavalry do way better, I mean, for fuck's sake. I've been absolutely mopping the floor with archers using my mounted saber militia this whole time. So, they don't have a defined role, the game isn't balanced properly, they need to deal with that shit. So yeah, eventually I could try playing with infantry cores in a campaign built around it. I'm not doing that for South Cell, no way, experimentally at, at most. And then maybe I'll start to notice that infantry can be used if you build everything towards them, because there are bonuses all over the place. Like, it's quite easy to find characters that buff infantry, and celeries that buff infantry, skill sets, and celery sets that buff infantry. So, maybe at that point, infantry become cost effective and can be used to to be the basis of armies, army cores. For now, nope. And why did I get a grey thoroughbred? That's expertise, so... I'm gonna give it to this guy because he's not on the field. Zhang Hong. So that'll make him better at reducing the construction costs. So that's a good thing. And there's Yui Jin with his... I'm leaving this with him. Unless I was to give it to Zhu Huang. I might do that. Yeah, I'm doing that. Oh, what the fuck? Match Jian. Nope. Nope. Oh, come on. So I'm just gonna have a, give him a standard Jian. And I can... I want this guy on the field. He has high... No, wait, do I want him on the field? Yeah, he's got plus 10% speed, so... I can have him be speedy with mighty knockback and charge around. Does he have high resolve? Not really. Alright, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go along the top with him. And give him infantry eventually, maybe. I'm happy though, because now I've got two of the legendary, the five legendary commanders, generals, that Cao Cao had. Just in a turn. They both came at once there, pretty much. And then it's Zhang Liao for number three. And then... I'm not sure about the other two. I'd have to look into the other two. See how that's going to work out. But I'm collecting them. Alright, so we've got to move now, so... I can't reach, but I can replenish, so I'm going to do that. And then I can attack on the next turn. Zhang Hu. Zhang Hu. He's 39. He's only got two units of axes, so... They're going to have more, though, because this is a faction with a city and a farmland, two counties. It's a dedicated faction, so they've got a faction leader, an heir, so they have more shit in the farmland, I think. I don't think they have anything over here, so it's just there. Construction completed in Chen Donghai Yangshuo. So this is going to be for farms, so... Look at the cost here, 744. Cost is way down, I think. Oh, and I can do assignments to reduce construction cost. So, I 
got UAG in for that. Xu Huang, though, I want him on the fucking field before UAG in. Plus industry income from this guy. Nah. So what do I actually have right now? I think Zhang Hong just got recalled and he was given a discount to construction until he was. So I've got to just allocate him again I think. Yep. And then I'm going with food production and then for Yang Zhou farming shit again. Now I've got to just upgrade the site itself, so that's taken a big chunk. And then, when I have more money, upgrading the fishing for this place. I was reading into the commanderies, the way to extract as much wealth as possible, and... Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is a very good commandery for commerce income after all. This plus 100 is shite, can do way better than that. But all I can really do right now is synergize towards it anyway, but not aggressively. So I don't think the development here is going to be very extensive. Like that minus two food, and then at minus six, and then before you know it, you're at minus minus sixteen and thirty. Yeah, fuck that. May have to just neglect Dong Hai as being shite, and I'm continuing to march up here. I don't know if I should attack Ke Yi. Maybe I should do that actually because it's going to be a while before I can hit Yuan Shu, so. Maybe I should just conquer through Hei Yi. Fuck yeah, I'm doing that. I'm marching through Hei Yi to get to Yuan Shu, and then I'll have both of my armies together assisting each other. And I can maybe swap around generals as well, like have Dian Wei swap places with Dun and have Dun lead. And then Sao Sao can lead again and he's got... Does he have reach? Yeah, I, I think I remember. Uh, wait a minute. Flexibility, I think... I think Sao Sao had reach and then they changed it. I think it's different now. Hmm. Alright, I need to do an artillery check, so... Nope. Then you shall... Nope. Nope. How's Sun Tzu doing? I'm on your buddy. He's got... Armies heading up towards... Yeah, look at that. They're on the march. It's a lot of shit. Two full bars. Full bar stacks. Can I give him food? Nope. Liu Biao is at war with me. But has... Yeah, these are at war with me as well. It's Kai Mao. Is it Sai Mao or Kao Ma Kai Mao? What the fuck? And Liu Dai probably won't have anything because he doesn't get out and about and do anything, so... Yep. Can maybe request aid? Soon. That's two turns now. Oh, what the fuck? That is the faction leader. It's gotta be. So when I took... When I took this port, I offered surrender, and he took it, and yeah, look. And he's got breath and wind, oh man. And a Marshall G. Oh man, I want that. I can't capture him. I wouldn't want to kill him. But I can maybe have him drop shit. Starting with Breath and Wind, I think. Hopefully. Ma Teng is attacking Dong Zhuo now. What the fuck? Alright, so it's all kicking off up there. Dong Zhuo is going to be feeling the pressure, so if I was to attack him, that could go well. Discourses of the States. Another one. Hmm. And a horse again? Did I just get another fucking... Yeah, I did. I got another thoroughbred, so I need to start selling these, I think. Just gonna equip them for now. I want to be exchanging them for better shit. And the uh, Wei Leozi, I don't want that on him. That's not very useful on him. So I'm taking that off him. 
and I'm giving it to someone else that can use it better. And I can give him a spear. No, wait, I'm giving him this. One minute. Fuck. Shit. Can I give the spear to... Can I give him a spear? Nah. God damn, I messed up. So... I've got to give him the spear. Yeah, because it's got expertise and he's one of the few sentinels that can actually use, that can synergize that expertise. So he's got the spear and then I don't think I can give that sword to, to back to him because he's on cooldown. It's on cooldown. Yeah, fuck. And then I'm giving the matched Jian to this guy. Never mind, I can't do that yet. Fuck. Wait, he can't use it. Shit. Alright, so I've got to just do... Oh, that's... He's got a glaive for now. Crap. And then... Dian Wei can get... This big fucker. So that works out. He's now got 73% bigger bodyguard. That is immense. For 106. Fucking hell. What? Yeah, if they had a horse too. Holy shit. And I can give him resolve plus 6 from the Wei Liaozi. And then I can maybe get a military expert for the whole set, depending on what the military expert does. Extra supplies. And satisfaction. And resolve. That'll be good. Then I could get him up to 107 or something, 108. So what loose weapons are there? Nah, none. Well, at least there's definitely more synergy happening now. But it's kind of weird. Matched Jian give... Instinct, but... None of the characters for whom you would want to be given instinct can actually wield it. They can use it. Reduces expertise, so you don't want it to be on a sentinel. And it gives instinct, so you'd want it to be on a vanguard, but they can't even equip it. <laughs> or at least that's what it looks like. 200 axes, pole arms. Fuck. And I can make that fishing village now. Or. Yeah, farmland. So, you want to go for the base food, generally, when you have less counties that have farm to multiply against. So, I think this ends up being a peasantry place. 70 peasantry income. Yeah, that's how it's got to be. And that 70 is 120%, so that's going to be like 80 or 90, so, no, yeah, 136%, so that's going to be like 100 when it gets multiplied up. Plus 136%, actually, that's, so that's like another 150 peasant income. That's actually really decent then, wow. So I should be making land surveying offices all over the place. Yeah, so income is going to be going up quite a lot from that. And then... I can upgrade this again for another 50%. This food production is going way up. So we're actually making 46 foods. And we're only distributing 12 of that, so... Wow. Yep, that food is going to go way, way up. So that's all the construction, except for this being done. And I can keep marching, so... Oh yeah, replenish. So I'm right up to the border of Hei Yi. Fanatical fucks, and I can't see anything, or... Yep, seven units of crap. I can deal with that. Their actual army is probably going to be up here then, in this Chen farmland. And then, attacking down here. And I'm besieging. 
Do I surrender? Nope. And their zone of influence is gone, so I can go right up here. And he's got... It's going to be quite substantial then. So he's got a garrison of medium... Medium archers, cavalry, infantry. And a sentinel with a big bodyguard. And himself, Kai Mao. So stone axe. First Iron Scale, Craftsman, Black Stallion. He's got a lot of shit. Fuck. So I want to be getting that. So they're gonna attack, I think. I could maybe ambush, and no, I can't too late. I could have maybe ambushed them. If I'd sat over here with Dian Wei, I could have possibly ambushed with all these. And we're decently replenished, so I can handle this fight. I can fucking handle that. I don't know why I got that. What's it that triggered this? Is this just a random event? Either way, I can't really use that. Reduces corruption. Another one of those. I already got that on this guy. And then she's got the increased income. Yellow rock. And then clay cup. Fuck. Gotta just keep upgrading. So... Once I make him the, the Prime Minister, he'll be reducing corruption even further. And now I've got a clay cup given authority and satisfaction that I can stack with the foreman to reduce construction cost for learning and market so I could have I could have an uh, sentinels with reduced construction cost stacking with this for even further reduced construction and that could be quite good so I could shuffle this shit around once I start getting these sets I just don't have a foreman I think I had one and I gave, I gave it away so I need another one. I need to start getting all of these different ancillaries and filling up, completing these sets. And I'm gonna do that by getting rid of horses, I think. Like, that's how we balance out the ancillaries. They just don't have any. Like, I've done ancillary checks on everyone and they fucking... Leo Bay. Nope. Yan Shao. Nope. Since, uh, you think he would have some decent fucking ancillaries because he's going around conquering the place. The entire south side of the map. So, nope. Yeah, he's got nothing. No one's got fucking anything. So I've got to just take them on the field. Starting with... Craftsman. Stone Axe I might get. Hopefully I'll get at least one of these in this fight. If I capture him, I can execute him and take one. But then... All the other ones are just destroyed, I think, when the faction dies. So, I don't know. Ooh. I think they're gonna attack me, so I'll have to be ready there. And then up here, next turn, I'll be marching on Heiyi. So, I'm, I'm attacking really aggressively, like, I'm pushing really hard on this part of the map. So, and these are my only enemies right now, because I've got Liu Bei up here, buffering against the north. This guy here isn't attacking. Like, I'm not at war with him and he's not doing anything. I think he's... I think he's dealing with... I would have thought he would be at war with... Yuan Shao or Liu Bei, but apparently not. So... He's not a threat. Liu Dai is an ally, basically, while I'm trading with him. And then it's Han here. Yuan Shu is insulated by the Han. So these are my only enemies right now. Hey Yi. I'm not at war with him. Could declare war on him, and I will be doing that next turn. And he's the only threat here, apart from Kai Mao. So, wait, I can request aid then, I think. Yeah, so... Yeah, I can request it on both of them, pretty much. 43, 10, 9. He's got a clay, I've upgraded his clay cup, so he should be really fucking happy. I'm giving him all my best shit. He's got a horse. He's got a sweet fucking text. 
He's got a sword. Yeah, he should be fucking happy, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm in a turn, I think. Could have maybe built a fishing port. With that money I just requested aid for. Dong Zhou wants us to be like, nah, fuck that. He would have given us 800 and guaranteed autonomy for us to become a vassal, not good enough. Because I can't attack the Han at that point. Alright, so, what the fuck? Is this it? Are they not? I thought they were backing them up. They're attacking Dian Wei. And is that Huangzhou there? That's the city of Huangzhou. They're vassals of Liu Biao. And these guys are also vassals of Liu Biao. So what the fuck? 1000 versus 2000. They could have had a much better fight if they were being reinforced. Because there's the garrison and then there's also the sentinel. So what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, I don't get that. I'm gonna have to look at the diplomacy and figure out what happened there, because that's confusing. And look at this, 106. 106. That's sweet. That looks really good. And I've got full compliments, nearly. So Ren is short a little bit. Full compliment on Lady Bayan. And decent chunky bodyguards on Sal Ren in the tank. And all my cavalry units, all my units are over half strength. So this will be a pleasant fight. Especially with Dian fucking away with his Cleaver Mountains. But I'll be fighting that next time to be continued. If you see value in what I'm putting out and want to show your appreciation, you can do that on my Patreon. Thanks to all my patrons for supporting me and my endeavours to continue. Particular thanks to Matteo Olivetti in Erdington and the Rodi 451.